to yet another video. We are making decisions that are better or worse for our health every day. Most of them are in regards to our food. And we actually know most of the answers, right? We know that a banana is much healthier than an Oreo cookie, but there are just, there are just times where we need this freaking Oreo cookie. And this is not a new problem. This is not a new problem and there are so many diets out there in history that said, you know what, our diet has exactly the solution for your problem. You have to put the littlest of effort into it, but you have the best of outcome. You will get skinny, you will get healthy, you will get happy, everyone will look at you. They promised you the world and it always sounded great. However, the methods were more than questionable sometimes. And because I find this topic very fascinating and through research I found some very obscure diets in history, I brought my top five of the most obscure and kind of funny diets in history and I want to show it to you. So let's buckle up buttercup and start the program. Yes, it's an AC controller. Just I just hope your suspension of disbelief is big enough. But now we start the program. I do it again. The year is 1727. The United States of America are not yet born, instead we are all living in the United Colonies. And with us, a man named Thomas Short is living in the United Colonies. He wrote a book called The Causes and Effect of Corpulence, and his idea of a diet was actually very simple. He found out that most people struggling with their weight are living near swamps. You know, the forest wetland. So his idea, his solution to this problem was just move away from this pesky forest wetland and you will have no problems with your weight anymore. Another great example that correlation is not always causation. Or maybe swarms are just making you chubby. I don't know. Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? For our next diet, we are jumping over into the year 1820s in the United Kingdom. The romantic poet Lord Byron was famous for a lot of things. Not all had to do with his poetry. He was especially famous for his many love affairs and also his severe eating disorders during his lifetime. So it's no surprise that he popularized the vinegar diet. The vinegar diet, as the name might suggest, you just drink a lot of vinegar and water and you lose the weight. Uh, of course, side effects are severe vomiting and diarrhea, but remember, if you vomit, you cannot eat. This is not a tip. It's just disgusting. Don't do it. What the hell, Summer? That's disgusting! Fucking gross, Summer! Jesus Christ! Hi, for our next diet, let's jump right in into the roaring 1920s. Fashion was all the way. People were wearing fedoras and fur coats. And can you even imagine a picture from the 1920s without people having a cigarette in their hand? And this is what our next diet is all about, the cigarette diet. Because again, if you are smoking, you cannot eat. Plus, cigarettes are known for having an appetite suppressing quality. So why not make advertisement exactly to show this kind of quality? In the end, who needs diet pills if you can have a cigarette and good old fashioned cancer? Somehow, you are still not sold on any of my diets I've brought up so far. I really have to step up my game here, right? Okay, let's jump over to the 1950s. And what if I tell you, you can eat whatever you want. Not only whatever you want, wherever you want, the quantities you want, you know, it all doesn't matter. Nothing does matter, you can still lose weight. Does it sound too good to be true? Yeah, because it is. Let's talk about the tapeworm diet. Now, the idea behind the tapeworm diet was to swallow a pill containing a tapeworm cyst. This cyst would grow into a full ass tapeworm within you and basically, very simple explanation, it eats all the food you are eating so you are not gaining weight. However, the side effects are seizures, meningitis, dementia. But, you know, researching this diet made me realize it's not about the diet. It's about the friends we are making within. So 
for our last diet, I do not want to step on anyone's foot. <laughs> I don't want to step on anyone's foot. <laughs> Because there is none. We are talking about the breatharian diet. Now, the breatharian diet is not only a diet, it's not only a lifestyle, it's even somehow kind of a religion. Um, people are just not eating in the most extreme cases. They are not eating or drinking drinking water, they are just consuming sunlight and air. Now it is disputed if um, those people who are claiming to do that can even do that. I leave that up to you if you believe in it or not. Uh, however, this is a, it's a diet that is suggested in the internet. So the next time uh, you are really hungry, you feel really, you feel hangry even, just step down, take a deep breath and you're good to go for a couple of days. top five bizarre diets I could find in the internet. Of course, you're clever. I don't have to tell you. Despite that, let me tell you, all these diets are very stupid. They are stupid, they are unhealthy, they are stupid, they are uh, dangerous, they are stupid, and most of them uh, most likely do not even have the effect you like. So, of course, do not do them at home. I think this is out of a question, right? No one wants to have a freaking tapeworm inside of you. I hope. No one wants to vomit vinegar. Okay, I'm going into the, into a circle. That's why I end this video here. Um, why did I even make this video in the first place? I was researching a diet I could do for a future video for a week or so. Of course, not a super bizarre diet, but maybe trying out veganism or vegetarianism for, for a week or so and tell you how I feel. And through it, I found all these bizarre diets so much more than five. So if you would like to see a second video of it, I have some more absurd diets I can show you, I can tell you about. So let me know if you liked it and also let me know if you didn't like it. And um, I do not know what will await you in the next week, but I hope you join me again. And until that, I hope you have a great week. <sighs> ah. It's for research.